um, the way conditions work, <clears throat> we'll start. We'll start with conditions. Conditions are um, kind of what we use to drive an if statement. So we'll start there. Then we'll expand it into the if statements, which is sort of the application of these conditions. Um, so when you have two values, we can start asking a series of questions about how these two values relate to each other. So there's a, a fairly limited set of questions we're able to ask in, and this is going to be true in any programming language. This is not just MATLAB. So um, we have, again, a series of questions about two things, basically, and how they relate to each other. The questions that we can ask are the following. We can ask, are there two things equal to each other? So if we have A and B, we can ask, is A equal to B? <clears throat> Second question we can ask is, is A greater than B? Or is A less than B? That's our third question. We can ask, is A greater than or equal to B? Or is A less than or equal to B? And we can ask, is A not equal to B? And that's it. Those are the only questions that we can ask. So it seems pretty limiting but we're just asking yes, no questions. Um, now what we can do is we can make combinations of these questions and we can actually make things fairly complicated, fairly complex. But before we talk about how to do that, let's um, talk about the syntax that we'd use in MATLAB. So if we want to find out if two things are equal, the uh, MATLAB syntax will look like this. So it'll say, is A equal to B? Is A greater than B? A less than B? A greater than or equal to B? Let me rewrite that. There's no space in between these. A less than or equal to B? Now with with a uh, with these two here, the uh, equal sign is always last. If you do it the other way, MATLAB is not going to get it, and it's going to give you an error message. For the last one, a not equal to b. Um, before I draw that one. Most programming languages are going to use the same kind of uh, symbol setup. So this will look the same in C++. It'll look the same in Python. It'll look the same in, in Fortran. The last one, not equals, it seems like every programming language picks a different way to do this. But in MATLAB, it looks like this. A tilde equals B. That means not equal. Just for just for fun, if you're doing this in C++, it would be exclamation point equals. If you're doing it in Fortran, it'll be back. Uh, it'll be slash equals. But these are the only questions that we have available for us to ask. These questions that we can ask, there are only two available answers to these questions. The two available answers are true or false. That's one or zero. That's it. There are no other answers. There's no sometimes true, sometimes not. It's either true or false.
Okay, now another thing I want to mention is these operations, these equals equals, greater than, less than, greater than equals, less than equals, not equals, these are what are called binary operators. They're called binary because uh, they have two inputs, an A and a B. They don't have to be called A and B, you can call them whatever you want, but they have two inputs. You have two inputs, A and B must exist or must be defined before you can use these operators. And again, they don't have to be called A and B. You can call them whatever you want. Um, okay, I want to talk a little bit about the double equal sign here for a second. So we are used to, um, we've seen this, the single equal sign, where you have uh, you know, an equal sign like that. On one side, we have a value. Our value could be just a number. It could be an expression, a mathematical expression. It could be another variable or some mathematical expression involving other variables. It could be the output of a function. It could be uh, you know, just whatever some command returns, which is an output of a function, by the way. Um, it could be lots of different things for that value on the right side of that equal sign, which I'll remind you is called the set operator. On the left side of the set operator, we take whatever happens on the right side here and we give it a name. So everything that's happening on the right side, any variables that appear over here, must be defined, must exist. When we give it a name here, we are defining a variable. So whatever our name here is may not exist before before we run our set operator. The set operator creates it and makes it exist if it does not already. So what we're doing with the set operator is we are telling MATLAB that whatever this variable name is, it's gonna be equal to this value. From now on, whatever this value is will be called by this name. So that's the set operator. Now we have the double equal sign. The double equals sign is a test. It's asking questions. It's trying to find out if A is equal to B. So A and B must both already exist. Whatever A is has to exist. A could be um, a variable. It could be a number. It could be a uh, mathematical expression. But everything in A must exist. B could be a number. It could be a variable. It could be a mathematical expression. It could be the output of a function. It could be anything, but it must, everything in B must exist. So we are not creating any variables here. All the variables have, have to have already been created by the time we get to this point. And then we're asking the question. So we're trying to find out here if these two values are equivalent. So a good kind of quick way to remember, with the double equal sign, we're asking. With the single equal sign, we're telling. And it makes a very big difference between those two. So uh, do not confuse your double equal sign and your single equal sign because they, they do very, very different things. If you were to use a single equal sign instead of the double equal sign here, so if you forget an equal sign, what you're going to do is you're going to take whatever the value of A is and you're going to overwrite it with B. 
from whatever the value of b is. So then instead of asking is a equal to b, then you're telling MATLAB a is equal to b. And you're going to lose information. So don't do that. So let's say I'm going to just set a couple of variables here. Let's say r equals 12, t equals 44. Okay, so I'll run a couple of these things. So let's say I want to find out r equals equals t. So here I'm asking, is r or r and t equivalent? The answer is no, they're not. So the output of this function is going to be false. Because those two things are not equal. Now, let's say I do this instead. Now I'm asking if R and T are equivalent. Now you're going to get an error because T does not exist. So you're not even going to get a true or a false. You're just going to get an error message because it's going to say t is undefined. So that's problematic. OK, let's put things back here. So let's say, let's say r is equal to 12 and t is equal to 12. So now this is going to come out at true. I could try a couple of others here. I could do um, r greater than t. That's going to be false. r is not greater than t, r is equal to t. But if I do this, r less than or equals t, that one's going to be true because r is equal to t. Okay, so these are very simple examples um, of how, how this is going to work. Um, but it doesn't necessarily have to uh, be super simple like this. So we could, um, you know, we could make these expressions. So how about uh, if r... r plus 12 less than t. So that's going to be false, because r plus 12 is 24. That is definitely not less than 12. So that would give us a false. So you could put all kinds of expressions on here. You could have um, t. So I won't be able to answer it, but I'll do it anyway. t times cosine of t. See, now we're getting somewhere where I can't do this in my head, but we could, so I won't be able to tell you if this is true or false, but you can set up a full expression on one or both sides of this equation. And you could then also this, I guess I shouldn't call this an equation, but because it's an inequality, but you can also uh, move values around here just like you could mathematically. So if I wanted to subtract 12 from both sides, I could do that. I could say minus 12 and minus 12. And then I could you know, rewrite all this. This would just become R. But now you can kind of treat these like equations or e like true inequalities and things. So I can make this a double equals. So now it's an equation. I can move things back and forth to both sides like you could in, like you can in regular math. Just as long as all variables that you use here exist. So when you're using these type of tests, as long as all variables exist, and they all have to exist for this to work, you can move things around to both sides of the equation just like you would in an equation um, on, uh, you know, on paper if you're doing a math problem set. So those are examples so far of using conditions just by themselves. Now, these are all even even if we complicate things a little bit with mathematical expressions, the mathematical expressions are still going to get um, evaluated down to their, um, you know, to the final value here. All the variables, like I said, must exist 
on both sides. But everything will get evaluated down to its final value. And then MATLAB is going to find out if the final value here is equal to R. If it is, it's true. If it's not, it's false. So you can make either side of these pretty complicated, but in the end, in the end, it's still going to bo boil down to true or false. Okay, so the way we can make this way more complex is by combining multiple conditions. We can do that. We can join these together using um, what I like to call conjunctions. Conjunctions and modifiers, I should say. Okay, so we can start combining some of these uh, these questions into um, you know sets of questions that together create a single condition. So what I mean by that is, well, I'll tell you what the modifiers are, the conjunctions and modifiers. Then we will go through and do some examples to kind of show you how this works. So if you want to take two conditions and put them together. Um, you can join them using AND. The uh, MATLAB syntax for that is ampersand, ampersand. You can also join them using OR. The syntax for that is a pair of vertical lines. The vertical lines, you can access those in your keyboard. Chances are you haven't really used those ever, unless you do, uh, uh, you know, making pictures using text on your keyboard. I don't know if that's even an in thing anymore, but you can make the symbol with shift and then the backslash key. That gives you the vertical pipe. Last one is not. So not not really a conjunction, but it is a modifier, and you can use the tilde to kind of flip things over by putting a not in front of it. So these are the three conjunctions or modifiers that are available for you to use. Um, the and and or occasionally in MATLAB you can get away with just a single symbol instead of double symbols. Put it sometimes on here. But the double symbols will work every time. So I usually just go for those. But like I said, there are ways you can get away with just the single single symbols. Okay, so let's do some examples. We'll start with and. So let's say we want to check two conditions. So we want to see if we want to find a number where a is greater than 10 and a is also less than 20. So values of a that are going to work here are going to be like this. So first of all, before we do this, in order for, so this is one entire condition here. In order for that condition to be true, each of these conditions needs to also be true. So let's say our number is uh, 25. So A equals 25. So A, uh, 25 is greater than 10. So we, this works here. But 25 is not less than 20, so this is not true. Now, in order for a statement with and to be true, both of these conditions need to be true. So since one of them is not true, this is false. 
Okay. Let's change our number a bit here. Okay, so let's say our number is a equals two. So two is not greater than 10, so this is false. Two is less than 20, so this is true. But overall, because one of these conditions is false, then that means the whole thing is false. Okay, so let's change our number again. Let's say our number is 14. So 14 is greater than 10, so that's true. 14 is less than 20, so that's true. So both of those conditions are true. Now, the whole thing is true. So when you have and, a has to be greater than 10 and a has to be less than 20 in order for this to be true. So you don't need to necessarily have two, just two things. You can have more items on here. So, yeah. so we could add another one on here. We could say and So now we can, let's add this. We can say round a over 2 equals a over 2. So a quick aside of what this is doing, the round command here, the round command uh, takes whatever's inside the parentheses here and rounds it to the nearest whole number. So when a is 14, a over 2 is 7. If you round 7 to the nearest whole number, it's going to be 7. Now what I'm doing here is I'm comparing a divided by 2 rounded to the nearest whole number with just a over 2 not rounded. So in this case, a over 2 is 7. If you round 7 to the nearest whole number, it's 7. So 7 equals 7. So these guys would be equal. So let's say my number, instead of being 14, let's say my number is 13. So now... 13 divided by 2 is 6.5. So if I take 6.5 here and round it to the nearest whole number, I get 7. Now they're not equal. So what this is doing, actually, is finding out if the number is even or odd. So now my condition says A needs to be greater than 10, A needs to be less than 20, and A needs to be an even number. So for this uh, larger condition to be true, all three of these need to be true as well. So if A is 13, that is greater than 10, so that checks out. It's less than 20, so that checks out. But A over 2 rounded to the nearest whole number is 7, and that is not equal to A over 2 by itself, which is 6.5. So the whole thing is false because we don't have an even number. But if my number instead is 18, it's greater than 10, it's less than 20, and it's even. So now it's true. Now you can stack on all kinds of different conditions on here and put them together with and, and then in order for the larger condition to be true, every single one of the conditions, individual conditions needs to be true. For and, I'll label this now, this is and, all conditions, all, all statements in this condition must be true. Okay, so you can get yourself into trouble with this a little bit if you're not careful. Let's say you make a condition that looks like this. You say uh, B must be less than 10 and B greater than 20. So can anybody think of any numbers that would satisfy this condition? A number that's both less than 10 and greater than 20. Yeah, probably not. 
So MATLAB doesn't care. MATLAB will let you do this. It won't, it won't, even, it won't even give you an error message. But every time you do this, it's always going to be false because there are no numbers that satisfy this condition. So this condition will be false every single time. And that's okay, but if you if you use this in an if statement, you're kind of wasting an if statement because then you're just wasting typing. You're typing more characters and opening yourself up for more errors. MATLAB doesn't care. MATLAB will see this and it will probably be laughing at you, but it'll run it anyway and say, well, okay, you know, that's you, you're the boss. So it'll allow it, but that's not going to do anything. Other things that won't do anything, or maybe have extra pieces here. Let's say we have C. It's great. That's not a C. That's a C. C is greater than 30, and C is greater than 40. All numbers that are greater than 40 are also greater than 30. So we really don't need to have the and in here. We could just say C greater than 40. So again, we've wasted a couple of keystrokes. MATLAB doesn't care to let you do it, but um, this is the thing to kind of be aware of, be watchful for. Now, there's actually applications where something like this could could be fine. Maybe you'd have something like uh, C greater than 30 and D greater than 40. Now this is totally fine. Now let's talk about or. So with or, we can say we need a number where, where A is less than 30 or A is greater than 50. OK, so here, say our A value is equal to 4. So we have two statements here, combining the one big one. A equal to 4, that is less than 30, so that checks out. It's not greater than 50, so that doesn't check out. But with an OR statement, we have OR, all we need is for one of these conditions to be true. A needs to be either less than 30 or greater than 50. It does not need to be both. Both is fine. Both will also make it work, but you only need one of the one of them to make it work. So this whole thing here is true. Okay. So let's say A is equal to 55. That's not less than 30, so that's not true. But it is greater than 50, so that's true. So that means the whole thing is true. So with an OR statement, like I said, only one of these needs to be true. Let's say A is 41. That is not less than 30. That is also not greater than 50. So now, the, now it's false. Because none of the conditions are true. None of the individual conditions are true. So with an OR statement, at least one of the statements needs to be true in order for the whole thing to be true. One or more statements needs to be true. Yeah, we can have something set up where, let's say we have uh, B and C. So B equals, let's write my statement first. Uh, we need to have B greater than 12 or C less than 4. Well, let's say my B value equals uh, 21, my C value equals uh, B divided by 7. If 
Okay, so B greater than 12, 21 is greater than 12, so that checks out. Uh, B divided by 7 is 3. So C less than 4, that also checks out. So this one's true. Let's say I change B and make B equal to uh, 42. B equals 42. So that's greater than 12, so that checks out. B divided by 7 is 6. This does not check out. But only one of them needs to be true, so it's true. <clears throat> Okay, let's change um, C now. Let's make C equal to B times 3. Let's make B equal to 4. So now, B is not greater than 12. So this is false. C, which is equal to B times 3, that's 12. Let me clean it up. Uh, C is not less than 4. So this also does not check out. So the whole thing is false. Now, again, you got to be a little careful with these because sometimes you can set up your statement in such a way that it's not really helpful. So let's say I set up a statement here where I say uh, D is uh, greater than 30 or D is less than 50. So are there any numbers that would not be true here? The answer is no, by the way, because this is true if you have a number that's greater than 30. This is true if you have a number that's less than 50. So no matter what your number is, one of these two statements will be true. So regardless of what your what D value is, this is always true. As long as D exists, this is always true. So again, MATLAB doesn't care. MATLAB will see this. It'll let you do it. But any condition, any, any, uh, anything you've predicated on this condition is always going to be true. So let's say you're using this to drive an if statement. The if statement's going to run every time, regardless. So you've got extra lines of code here. OK. We can also have combinations of ands and ors together. So we can do something like this. And you can use parentheses to kind of move things around here. So let's say I have a condition where I want A less than 50 and A greater than 30. So I want numbers between 30 and 50. But I also want this to work if A is equal to 1. Okay, so here I've got a series of conditions. So first I've got, got these two here, a less than 50, a greater than 30, with an and in between. So that kind of forms a whole condition here. Then I've got my or, a equals 1. So that's another piece of the, same, of the whole condition here. So we can start evaluating these here. Oh, let's say a equals, well, let's say a equals 1. Why not? a equals 1. So that is less than 50. So that checks out. But it's not greater than 30. So that does not check out. That means 
the condition in the parentheses here does not check out. That's a false. But on the other side of the or statement, if, it, if A equals 1, it checks out. So with our or, the or part of the or statement here, we actually check out. So this is true. Well, let's say A was equal to 2 instead. A equals 2, it's still less than 50, so that checks out, but it's not greater than 30, so that doesn't check out, so this side doesn't check out, and it's also not equal to 1, so that doesn't check out either, so the whole thing's false. Well, when I try these and it gives me a, like 1 for true and 0 for false, uh, what does it mean when it tells you logical? Logical is just telling you that... Uh, when it's telling you zero, it means false, and when it's telling you one, it means true. So uh, what MATLAB does when it's actually processing these, um, it doesn't actually see the words true and false. It sees zero and one, or one and zero. So one is true, zero is false. You're basically getting, you're getting right down into the binary numbers here um, when, it, when it does these. So... Um, like we know, like the, the terms true and false are really uh, constructs for us as users of the computer. But inside the computer, it's just a zero and a one. And MATLAB's decided not to bother um, translating it for us. It's going to assume that we can figure it out ourselves, basically. So that's what, that's what it's doing there. So zero is false, one is true. You actually play a game with this, um, this kind of thing. So you could, uh, you know, add add a layer to twenty questions, for example, a game to play with a child, I suppose, where child asks a question. If the answer if the answer is yes or true, you turn on the light. If the answer is not true or false, if the answer is false, you turn off the light. That's basically exactly what MATLAB is doing here with you. You're asking it questions. It turns on the light if it's true. It turns off the light if it's false. So MATLAB's treating you like a child, basically. I think that's actually a good segue to jump over to MATLAB and uh, I'll show you a couple of just a couple of quick things on there. Um, now if I type true. Let's say I say A equals true. Now notice no, no uh, quotation marks or anything, just A equals true, all lowercase, no quotes around it. That's going to give me that logical one for A. And if I do B equals false, again, no quotation marks, just the word false, all lowercase. I hit enter. It's going to give me a zero. So true is one, false is zero. Just kind of a quick, so you can use true and false uh, in your expressions. Okay, so um, just a quick thing, I want to mention those quotation marks. If I say C equals single quote true, like this, instead of, so if I use the single quotes, you'll notice the syntax box pop, pops up a little different. If I hit enter now, C is equal to true. And this is actually now equal to the word or the all the letters that form the word true. So this is T-R-U-E. We've created a small array of uh, text that contains T-R-U-E. This is not the same as a logical one or a true. This is just the actual word true. So it makes a very large difference using or not using the quotes. If you do not use the quotes, then you're dealing with logical values. Now you're turning light switches on and off. Here we're just printing text on the screen. So it's an important distinction that I want to make here. So if instead C equals true without the quotes, now we are turning the light switches. Okay, so we can now 
enter some of these conditions in here. So let's say I'm going to set some values here. So A equals 12 and B equals 41. So now if I ask A equals equals, that's a double equal sign, B, this should tell me false. And it does. It says logical zero, but that's a false. If I do uh, A less than or equal to B, now this should give me a logical true. And it does, logical one. So you can actually, if you're doing this on your MATLAB, you can click, you can click on logical. That's a link. It'll open up a, a help file to explain what logical is. Okay, so this is going to kind of tell you all kinds of things about what logical does. This is actually probably more information than you need, but. Yeah, there's quite a bit to scroll through, lots of stuff to read. You can also see this on your in your command window. So if you wanted to read about that, you could type help, logical. And that same uh, text that we we're just seeing on the screen or something similar, this will give you a, a description of what logical does. Now, usually when we're using conditions, we're not actually going to see the result ourselves. We're going to take the result and use that as an input to an if statement.